All right, good morning, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day from Pastor Doug and Cindy yeah. to each of you. <laughs> we uh, just want to let you know how much uh, we love you and what you mean to our lives and so grateful. And Valentine's Day is a good day to be able to communicate that. Uh, we're coming from, of course, from our, uh, from actually from our dining room here this morning. Uh, these last couple of Sundays, we're in the winter apocalypse, apparently, and uh, and so we, of course, we had to cancel last week and this week, but next weekend looks good uh, from what I, from what the future weather report is going to be, and and it's all will be going sunshiny and excited that next week actually we're going to have Ryan Bastris, Ryan and Kirsten Bastris with us, and he'll be ministering and sharing, and that ought to be. That ought to be exciting. It ought to be good, you know. Yeah. And uh, but we uh, we're so glad that we can be able to share our hearts with you today. Uh, you know, actually, uh, the last two Sundays we've been prepared to share this that's been in our hearts, and and uh, so we're glad we, that we're able to come to you this morning and share some things that God's been instilling in our hearts. You know, back in January. We had really felt from the Lord it was a time of just taking the month of January, a good portion of the month, uh, 21 days, and just seeking Him and praying, you know, and saying, God, what, what, are you, what have you put within my heart, God? What are the things that you're speaking to me? What are the things that are, what are the dreams that you are placing there within our hearts and you know, I've been I've been very pleased with the people that have come back and sharing things that have been uh, that God has been putting on their hearts and dreams and things like that, and just uh, God's plans and His destiny for people, and that's really what we wanted. I mean, you know, uh, uh, I mean it's what we've always wanted at Harvest is a place where people could come and and uh, and have a have a just a growing vital relationship with God and be able to discover the things that God has for them and to release them into that. Our hearts have always been for 22 years, Cindy, yeah, hasn't it? Absolutely. To make sure that people are empowered, uh, people are that are I mean, disciples have drawn close to God, hearing from God, and being able to discover you know, what, what is it that God wants me to do with my life and to be able to release people in that. And over the years, we've seen so many people come in to harvest and we've released them out into other places and uh, just seeing God do wonderful things in their life. Amen, yes. Amen? Anything you want to say, baby? I, no, I'm, I'm okay. fine right now. She, she's holding <laughs> back. She's going to let loose here in a little bit, okay? But... Uh, yesterday I was uh, just kind of contemplating on a verse in God's Word. It's, it's one that's probably very, very familiar to, to many of us in Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, you know, the background a little bit is Jeremiah is the prophet, is still in Jerusalem, but the Babylonians have come. They have overtaken uh, Israel, have overtaken, you know, the city, Jerusalem, and they have, and they have taken... Uh, the elders, the royalty, others into Babylon as, as servants and as slaves. But they, but they let Jeremiah remain in Jerusalem there. And he's writing this letter to be delivered to the elders to, to be able to be shared with the people. And so just kind of getting your heart and mind, these are people that are, they've, they've, they've lost their homeland. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're not in a very uh, great place, and there's probably uh, just dealing with that. And, and you know, we all go through moments where we are really challenged in our lives, and we're really challenged that maybe things haven't gone according to what we thought. And you know, I know for me, this verse has through my through my time as a believer. These words found in this scripture has always brought so much hope. Yeah. It has always kind of centered me again. 
uh, not to give in to all the circumstances and things, whether it was good or bad or, or uh, you know, uh, didn't realize it was getting ready to happen or whatever it was. In Jeremiah 29, 11, he writes, for I know the thoughts, or it can be translated also, for I know the plans that I think or that I have towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts or plans of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. You know, what God is saying, he says, God, God is telling his people, listen, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you're encountering right now, there are always thoughts, plans, dreams in my heart that I want to get to you so they become dreams in your hearts and they become plans that you walk out for your future and for your hope. And that's how God communicates, doesn't he, baby? Yes, absolutely. You know, that's how he, when he begins to communicate to us, many times he puts a seed of a dream or a thought within us that's from his heart and that we begin to dwell upon. We begin to just let it grow on the inside of us. And I know Cindy and I, we've, gosh, we've had a lifetime <laughs> of thoughts and dreams and plans, you know, uh, I look back, uh, it's been, this year will be 50 years, 50 years since I gave my life to Christ in 1972, almost 50 years. And, um, and so, um, you know, at that time, I almost immediately began to involve myself in ministry. God began at the, at the time of salvation, he began to put plans, dreams in my heart. And uh, from that point, uh, I began to just serve in ministry in different capacities and uh, over the years in different places, uh, uh, you know, different places within the church, outside of the church. And just, I want to just tell you, it's been a wonderful thing. I know for Cindy and I, we're, we're coming up now this year into our 43rd Mm -hmm. <laughs> anniversary and uh and 43 years of living life together and being together and you know of those 43 years Cindy and I both the majority of those years uh over 40 years I know for sure that we have been in full-time ministry together yes you know sharing together the dreams that God has put in our heart and uh you know whether it was in youth ministry children's ministry, campus ministry, you know, uh, uh, ministering to teenage girls in our group home facility so many years ago and saw so many young ladies come to Jesus that were in just desperate places. And, and so for over 40 years, we have been able to just see God bring forth our dreams. Mm -hmm. And you know, the thing about it is that we're not finished. <laughs> We're in, it's not over with yet, you know. God has still put dreams within our hearts that we are yet to live out. Uh, I think that one, and Cindy can probably share on this uh, as well, I think one of the most encouraging things that is Cindy went through her cancer diagnosis, through the chemo, went through the heart attack and everything, um, was that God was saying to us, don't, don't worry, don't fret. You're going to recover well because you have not lived out all the dreams that I've put in your heart. That's right. All the plans that I've put there, the things that are just rumbling in your heart that you're ready to step out into. God says, listen, they haven't happened yet. And so you don't need to fear that maybe your days are coming to an end because uh, you haven't you haven't accomplished everything that I have for you. That's right. Thank yeah, you. I know that that was one thing that, you know, as you heard the diagnosis of cancer, Cindy, that God just spoke so clearly to you Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. You know, and so, so we just want to, you know, just as, just as we've been praying for you, that, that you are, you are just coming alive with the dreams of God in your life. We want to take a few minutes and share some of the dreams that are in our lives. And we believe that we are, we are, uh, it's the timing of the Lord for us to begin to walk in to those dreams. You know, um, one of the things that, you know, 
I'm a pastor. I'll always be a pastor in the sense of uh, having a pastoral heart toward people, toward leaders. It's always been a passion within me to be able to to raise up leaders, to impart myself and my giftings within them, to encourage them, to believe in them, to see them released into what God has for them, and then just to be there for them, to be a good friend, you know, to be a mentor, uh, to be a papa to them in so many ways. And that's still, that's the core thing that's within my heart. And many of you know that uh, even as a pastor at Harvest, I have traveled a lot and working with other churches, working with other pastors, leaders, and I believe that, you know, God has had this in my heart for such a long time. And I knew for so many years, probably, you know, uh, for at least 10 to 15 years now, that God is bringing me to a place to release me into that uh, in a greater way, in a greater fashion. And uh, I knew that time was getting near when a lot of my leaders <laughs> were coming to me. Pastor Rifle, you know, uh, people like Danielle, Paul and McKay, uh, Mike Coleman, others, uh, and be able to say, uh, you, know, you know, when are you going to do it? <laughs> when are you going to step out into this? And, you know, the last couple of years have been, we've had other things that we've had to deal with, you know, and... Uh, but uh, I know even this past year, uh, people like Brian Dompster, Pastor Brian and Pastor Rifle and others, uh, Pastor Chip Bueller and Bill Bennett and so many that I have such respect for have said, Doug, uh, you need to do this. It's time. You need to be released to do this. And, and, and I just know it is time that for me to be able to be released into the lives of of other pastors, other leaders, um, to really take what we we have begun in Harvest Global a couple years back with Manuel, Pastor Manuel and myself, as we began Harvest Global with the intent of serving churches, helping churches, helping leaders, discipling them uh, internationally and here in the United States, and it's uh, and so that's that's a dream. That has always been in my heart, a dream to always equip people, mm -hmm. a dream even now still here in Richmond to see pastors and leaders equipped through seminars or through conferences. And I really believe that's some of the things that will be in the future that I will be putting my hands to. But that's, that's probably, I think, baby, yeah. you know, the, really the dream that's in my heart. And, uh, and I know in the same way, uh, Cindy has just... She's been dreaming, <laughs> you know. One is that I know she's going to be a part of what we do as we travel out, that she's going to be with me, you know, some, and, and be able to travel into other nations, other countries, other places. We're getting ready to, here in a couple of weeks, to travel up to Pennsylvania to, with, to be with a young pastor, to ordain him, and for that he's going to become a part of Harvest Global. A good friend of Ryan Baxter is Pastor Shane Smith in Hanover, Pennsylvania. And so uh, excited about that here at the end of this month to be doing that. But um, so that's that's the dream that's in my heart. And, you know, God has it's been there for a long time. And God says, Doug, I haven't taken away and I'm releasing you into that, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I want to send you to share a little bit kind of the dream that God has put within her heart for that we both will be involved in as well. Absolutely. You know, back a few years ago, the Lord spoke to me and, you know, I, I've shared this before. He asked me, he said, are you content where you're at mm -hmm. or, you know, there's more, do you want more? And, uh, you know, it was, it was odd because I, I felt like I could have stayed in the, where I was at. Mm -hmm. Or I could have gone for the more, and God would have been happy either way with me. But um, but he asked me three times. It was almost as though he had to shake me out of this mm -hmm. routine yeah, that I was yeah. in. And, uh, you know, he did it. By the third time, he asked, and I said, Lord, I always want to more. You know, <laughs> I always want to go for the Amen. more. And, Amen. Uh, you know, uh, 
like I said in the past, he that, that's when he introduced me to some people that they thought a little bit differently. But he also started downloading to me about a place called The Refuge. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've shared uh, yeah. with many of you before about The Refuge, but, you know, a, a place where uh, ministers could come, where CEOs could come, where people that were sick could come. Anything, you know, where they just needed to be refreshed mm -hmm. and renewed. A place where they would come and they would just spend a little time and uh, just he hear Papa's heart for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that has just been, and I've got notebooks full of notes on what it's going to look like and what it's going to be like. She and, does. Uh, I, I, even <laughs> have, I even have people at this point who have, who have stood up and said, I want to come be a part of that with right. you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I want to move there and, and be there with you to do that, uh, to see it come about. So, um, but you know, one of the things that God had to do with me, and I believe he's in the process of doing this with me as with the rest of the body of yeah. Christ, is he's bringing us from that, um, what he had to do with the children of Israel when he brought them out of Egypt. He had to bring them from being servants to being sons. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was, uh, it, it, I, I came into the kingdom feeling like I needed to serve God. Right. And, uh, and that, that's not a negative thing. That's sure. a good thing. Yeah. But in that, I never expected anything from him. And I always expected that it, it was like I would flip from him being my taskmaster to him being my employer, you know, where I, I could do things. I would, it, as long as I was doing the right things, I would get a paycheck or I would get, you know, kudos from God. You've mm -hmm. done a good job. And uh, so over the last couple of years, he's really had to bring me into this place of your, your family. I'm your father. I'm not your employer. Yeah. I'm not a slave master. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the problem with being a good slave is that you grow up and become a good slave master yourself, <laughs> you know. And uh, so God's had to really come in and, and change my mindset about that. And the only, the only thing that he's spoken to me about recently in that is that he said, the way to get out of that mentality is to enter into my rest, to know that I've done it, to know mm -hmm. that it's already been done. Because being a slave or being an employee will drain the life out of you. Yeah. But being a son, will That's right. it will produce life yeah, within yeah, you. Yeah. And uh, so I had to come to know that in the midst of, you know, this last few years, uh, you know, I, I tell Doug all the time, it's like before we can have an aha moment, we need sometimes need that oh no moment, you know. <laughs> and and with me, I'm because I'm stubborn. Are you? <laughs> I'm stubborn. <laughs> you know, not it's just me. <laughs> I don't hear the first time, or I don't believe what God is saying the first time. So, um, you know, so I, I put myself in these situations where all of a sudden it's like I'm going, oh, no, what am I going to do now? And I end up having to go into the secret place a good bit to find mm -hmm. out. You know, like when I got the cancer, um, you know, when they gave me that diagnosis, it was a real oh, no moment for me. And I had to really mm. seek the heart of God and go in and find out, oh, God, you didn't do this. This was not you. Yeah. This was all the life being sucked out of me because I don't know how to live, you know? And uh, and it's coming into that sonship and, and being able to dream and know that God has put dreams in your heart, not just for you to dream about, for, but for you to walk in. That's right. And, uh, you know, so the last couple of years have been, have gone from that, oh no, to aha, this is what you want from me. This is what you're doing in me. 
and uh, it's been a it's been a trip, mm -hmm. but it's been one of the best things that could have ever happened yeah, to me. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. You know, the same way with me with what uh, the the health issues that I've been through, and also just walking with Cindy through all the things. And but you know, in the midst of just seeing God's hand there, and seeing God saying, "Listen, you know, uh, there there are things that I've placed within you that you're going to walk out. You're going to live out, and you're going to have an a greater impact than you ever dreamed That's before. Right. You know, uh, been in ministry now for whew, 50 years and in a lot of ways, um, you know, I've come across so many people uh, that had, they just hit a wall, they're exhausted, they're tired, they want to give up, they're, 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 you know, overwhelmed, they lose their dream and, and they get, they get so occupied by, by so many things, their dream gets strangled almost, and they forget it, and they lose it. And I've seen so many people drop off on the way, you know, toward all that God wanted to do in their life. And really, you know, the, 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 the dream of the refuge yes. is a place that these people can come. <clears throat> Absolutely. You know, yes. that we can host, that we can minister to, that just for them to come in for a number of whether it be weeks or whatever it would be, and for us to be able to just, you know, minister to, to them as a mom and dad in a way, or a brother and sister uh, with them, and to be able to encourage them, and for them to have a place of rest, yeah. uh, a place of just restoration, a place to dream again, a place yes. where they could seek the Lord, you know, and just be able to, you know, treat them like they're royalty. You know, everybody is so valuable. Yeah. And so sometimes, you know, the way we're treated, we're, that doesn't come across. But we feel like, especially people in ministry, people who are missionaries, people in other lands and in and, and countries and nations, to be able to come and to honor them and to say, listen, you, you are so valuable in the kingdom of God. Don't ever, don't ever lose that. And we want to minister and spend time with you and be able to bless you with, you know, with, with gifts and things like that, all sorts of stuff. And so we're excited about, yeah, we are. you know, the, this idea of a refuge and a place that is, that is just a real peaceful place. And, yes. you know, uh, we don't know exactly where it may end up being. You know, we always had something in our heart toward the mountains, but we'll see yeah, what God does. Absolutely. But anything else you want to share about the refuge, baby? Um, you know, all one thing the Lord just recently shared with me is he said, you know, he said it's real easy to dream as long as it stays a dream. He said, mm -hmm. you know, the, but he said, are you willing to step into your dream and see it become a reality um, you know, even with all the, the issues in your heart concerning, will, it, will this be taken from me? Will I fail? Mm -hmm. Will, you know, so many different things. And right. God said, are you willing to trust me to step in to what your dream is? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I had to really think about that because I, I wasn't sure at that point. It, it, it had become very easy to dream, mm -hmm. but not as easy to step into it right, and uh right. you know so i i feel like the lord is saying okay you've come to a point now where i want your dreams to become your reality right, right. you know the thing about dreams is that there's usually a process yeah. that you walk through uh you know of course one of one of my favorite people in the in, in the bible is joseph uh, it's always been I, I just have loved the the joseph the man that he that he was I mean, he still is, you know, uh, and just to be able to pull from his life and pull from the things that he walked through. And, you know, in, in chapter 37 of Genesis, we get, we, we're introduced to Joseph and he's a young man. He's about, you know, about 17 years old or, uh, and, uh, or maybe a little bit younger than that, but he has a dream. God, God communicates his thoughts his plans for Joseph. And, and, and all of a sudden, Joseph has this download through a dream. This is what I'm to be. I'm going to be a leader. I'm, 
I'm actually going to be a leader over my entire family. I'm the youngest at this point in time in my family, but I'm going to lead my family. I'm going to lead others. I'm going to be a great leader. And, uh, and you know, his dream necessarily at the beginning wasn't received very well. But then we, we see the process that Joseph goes through. And uh, in verse 40, uh, 43, I believe, uh, we see him finally, he's brought into Pharaoh's court and Pharaoh says, basically, you know, Joseph helps to interpret a dream that Pharaoh has been having, has been troubling him. And Joseph gives the interpretation to the dream and tells what, what's getting ready to happen. And, and Pharaoh says, you know, who else could I find that has the spirit, the excellent spirit within him that Joseph has? And he puts Joseph in charge of all of Egypt underneath him. He was the second in command. And then a couple of chapters later in verse in chapter 45, Joseph begins to encounter his brothers and he's able to reveal himself to his brothers and the actualization of his dream. And but it, you know, historians say it's probably close to fifteen to seventeen years. Yeah. before his dream came forth. But Joseph never gave up on his dream. He pursued his dream in every way that he could, you know. And that's important for us, whatever our dream is, that we pursue it in every way that we can, you know, that we begin to live out the essence of the dream even before everything lines up for us to see our dream actualized. And so it's a process. You know, I know for us, for me, the dream that I have with Harvest Global, it's been there for a long time, probably at least 15 years or more. I know the refuge for Cindy, probably eight to 10 years, yeah. it's been within our heart. And so it's, so we've walked through a process, you know, and you come to, you come to a place where it's time. It's time mm -hmm. that you step in to that process. And that's where we're at, my friends. And, uh, and so we know it's time for us to, to step down as senior pastors of Harvest Renewal Church. You know, uh, it's not a sad thing. You know, it really is. Uh, you know, I have treasured 22 years of pastoring Harvest from, from being the founding pastor from nothing to, to where we are today. You see, so many lives have been touched and had built so many valuable relationships and so many relationships that's going to be ongoing. I know that, you know, just because I'm not in a certain position doesn't mean that the relationships have got to change at all. And so Cindy and I have prayed a lot yeah. about this. And, you know, we knew that that time was getting closer and closer and closer and just recently, like I said, everybody's been, <laughs> when are you going to do it, Doug? You know, when are, when are you going to step into the thing that really is such your dream? And uh, so I appreciate the, 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 the encouragement that we have had from so many of our uh, leaders and elders and pastors and other people that see it within us and say, listen, you know, our, our dream for you is to go for it, do it, you know? And so that's, that's really what we believe it's time for us to do. Yeah. And so, um, so at the, as we come into February and March, where we will continue, but our, uh, at the end of March, we will be stepping down as the senior pastors of Harvest Renewal Church. And, um, and so we just, uh, I know probably sharing this is not a great surprise to many of you because you know th this has been in our hearts for a long, long time. Yeah. And I know for, you know, we have a wonderful church and people and, and I know that your, your heart for us is for us to be able to fulfill and to be able to walk into everything that we can do. You know, and so that's so important. You know, uh, when God brings you into your actualization of a new dream, something has to stop so that something begins. You see it, you know, we, we 
when I, when I was doing campus ministry, leading uh, Campus Harvest as the national director for many years, uh, that has to that had to end in order for me to move to Richmond and to be able to found Harvest Middle Church and begin the 22 years of doing this. There was a beginning, there was an ending and a beginning. And I think it was back probably in October, and I've shared this probably from the pulpit a couple of times, that I, the Lord says, that we're bringing, I'm bringing you and Cindy, but not just you, but the people, the church, the church at large and the body of Christ into a time and a season of, of a new wineskin. But he, but he initially said of a death and a resurrection, that something has to end so that what is going to be the next, the resurrected thing, to begin. You know, and the thing about it is that the resurrected state looks very different from the state that was before. Yeah. Uh, if you think about Jesus, you know, as he, as he lived his life with his disciples and people and, that knew him well, walked with him, knew who he was, that when he was resurrected, many of them didn't recognize him because he looked different. Mary thought he was the gardener. Yeah. You know, the people on the, on, the, on the way to Emmaus that he walked with, walked with them the entire way talking and sharing, and they did, did, had no clue that it was Jesus until at the very end when all of a sudden he was revealed in, a, in, in some way, some fashion, and they realized, oh my gosh, that was Jesus. Didn't our hearts burn? But even people like Thomas didn't, didn't recognize him. He said, I won't, I won't believe you unless I can touch and see the nail prints in your hands. So the resurrected part, parts of our life that we all will walk in, a death and a resurrection, will look very different yeah. from the death part, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when God is doing a new thing, he talks about it in the scriptures many times. Jesus talked about it, that what he was bringing forth was something new, and it would not fit in the old wineskin, would not fit in the, in the old ways of doing things. And Jesus said, that, he says, who puts new wine in old wineskins? Because the old wineskin won't be able to hold the new wine as it goes through its process of maturing. And he said, you have to put it in a new wineskin. I really believe the church in America is, is coming into a, a place of a new wineskin, that things are going to be done differently. The church is going to look different. You know, uh, the way we, we, we just minister, the way we do life together is going to look different. It's not a bad thing. It, it, it is God making ready for what he's getting ready to do, which is to bring, bring the reality of who he is into this earth more and more, and that we see revival happen all around us. And so I believe that, that there is you know, that beginning of a new thing, but also the ending of something. Yeah. Honey, anything you want to... You know, one thing that... Uh that I just want to reiterate, it's not, it's not just about following your dreams. It's about, you know, the way that you become a new wineskin is that you spend time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, the oil of Holy Spirit being rubbed into your life in order to receive the new. Because uh, sometimes we can be so caught up in routine that we miss out on what God is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one thing that Chris Blackaby always says is he says, try to think of a new color. And he said, you, you can't do it. Your mind cannot do it. And so when God says, I'm going to do a new thing, we think, oh, you're just going to do something different than what we're doing now, but it'll be, it'll, it'll be familiar to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's easy to stay in the familiar. It's, a lot harder to go into the new because we don't we've never been that way before and uh you know the the way to do it in a place of rest or from a place of rest is by spending time with the lord 
just spending time in his word. And I'm not talking about time as you measure out an hour, but just being with the Lord, being mm -hmm. one with him, knowing who he is, being a, being a true son of God. Um, you know, not, not gender that has nothing to do with gender. It's a like mankind son mm -hmm. of God being a son of God is, is being in that intimate place where you hear his thoughts, you know what he's right. saying. And, uh, you know, that, that is so vital. You know, that's what, uh, oh moments do to you. They cause you to go, oh, I'm going to have to really seek God because it, it, it shakes you out of the familiar into the presence of God where you go, now you, uh, you've got to show me the path that I'm supposed to take now. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so that's, that's where we have been and that's where we are now. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm, I'm really excited and I'm thrilled because I believe that it's not just for us, but for you as well. Absolutely. Uh, God's bringing you into a new wineskin. I believe for our community, our city, the churches here, uh, God soon that probably almost nine to ten months ago, we began to meet with our leaders, our elders, our pastors, as we begin to discuss this. And uh, at our first meeting, uh, Sydney and I told them that you know we are we are um, you know over this next year probably we are going to be going through a process of beginning to step down as senior pastors at the church, which was which was really welcomed by our leaders. Many of them said it's about time, and not in a bad way, if you, if you know, but it's just like we're, we're, we're happy for you, Doug. Cindy, we're happy that you're going to, you're, this thing that's been in your hearts for so long, we, we want to release you into that. And so we begin to pray. What does that mean for us as a community? What does that mean for us as a church? You know, mm -hmm. and we pray, what, what will it look like? And, uh, what what will be the changes within us as a church? And we explored a lot of possibilities, you know, uh, of how that might happen, mm -hmm. how the transition might happen. And, um, and it's just recently that uh, through, you know, through a lot of apostolic counsel, through Chip Bueller and Bill Bennett and others, and just among ourselves, came we came to this 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 unified sense th together it wasn't just Cindy and I saying this is what we feel like we need to do but it was them yeah. as well every pastor every leader every elder all came together and said you know uh, it's been wonderful but God's getting ready to, to end something so that something new begins and we don't know all what it may look like so as Cindy and I will be stepping down at the end of March, uh, our services will be ending at that point in time as well. Uh, Harvest Rural Church will be ending in, in that way as well. Yeah. Um, the thing that, you know, with that, I mean, 22 years, that's, that's a long time. And the thing that, that causes me not to be sorrowful about it but excited about it is that I know that if God is speaking this to our leadership and to our staff and, and everything that God has something amazing that he's going to do. And just because services may end or the churches we, that we're used to may end doesn't mean, mean that our relationships end at all. You know, I, I pray that it, 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 it expands us to a place of saying, man, these are some awesome relationships. I want to continue relationships and finding out ways that we can to, can do that. You know, I know one of the things that God has placed within my heart, I don't know all that it may look like, but I know that I have a desire, a heart, that in what we do through Harvest Global Ministries is to develop a place as a resource center, as a ministry center, and already, I know I've been talking with a number of our leaders of, of remaining in this year, doing a number of conferences, things like that, uh, bringing in some just amazing people into our midst to impart life 
into people's lives, into leaders, into pastors, and things like that, and to be able to really to affect the the leadership and the and the pastors within the city of Richmond. It's really in my heart to be able to do that, and I believe that that's a part of the resurrected state that we will begin to see. I don't see the entire picture. I will be communicating that with you as we move forward. But you know, I want to take the remaining time that we have in a, that we will be having services beginning next week through the end of March that for us to come together and to celebrate, you know, mm -hmm. to come together and say, listen, man, God has formed, has such wonderful relationships that we have. The people that are, are still at heart, are, are at harvest, people have come through harvest that we're still in relationship with. I mean, let's, let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate what that may look like. Um, you know, um, I know a couple of things right now. The healing rooms will continue on Monday nights. I know David and Debbie are leading the school of ministry on Wednesday nights, uh, Thursday nights at, a, at another location as well. That's going to continue. And so, you know, some things will, will in some ways continue. And new things will be are going to be being birthed. Some things are coming to an end, like we say, and um, and so we want to be able to hear you share this with you. If you need to talk to us to get greater understanding or just share your heart, please let us know, and and we'll we'll set aside time to be able to do that. You know, I've I'm already been doing that uh, with people. And so, uh, so I just want to be able to share that we we will for we're looking at okay we have a facility um, we we rent it out now to Wave Church they will continue to rent it um, we're looking praying over um, the possibility the likelihood that we may end up selling the building and placing those funds into ministry funds that we can can bless people and bless the body of Christ and and further the ministry that's within my and Cindy's hearts yes. and other people's hearts that we can invest in them as well. And so we're looking at that as, as well and we will be communicating more about that. And uh, we just want to, um, you know, just follow every detail that God has for us. And so, um, baby. Uh, I guess, you know, the, the thing is, one of the things about dreaming and, and stepping into dreams, we want you to be able to mm. share that with us yeah. and share that with the church, you know, so these next few weeks as we celebrate what God's doing, we want you to be, to come prepared to share your dreams um, so that we can pray over you and, mm -hmm. um you know, pray, you guys pray over us, we pray over you, let God speak, and you know, if you're having trouble figuring out what that dream is, yeah. that we can pray over you to, you know, to realize yeah. those dreams and to bring them to the surface. You know, it's been amazing since we begin to walk in this, how many, especially a number of our leaders, God has just been downloading new things, new dreams. I think as we take this step, you know, as we all take yeah. this step together, that something is going to be released from heaven into all of our lives, yeah. you know, that we begin to understand our new wineskin and the, the things, the thoughts, the plans, the dreams of God that he's putting within us. But sometimes it, it, it has to take that decision that, okay, we're, this ends so that this can begin. And I really believe that as we are making this decision and sharing with you today, that it's going to it's going to uh, release something within your life as well for you to be able to understand and know and just a download of new dreams. And it's just been amazing hearing from so many people as they they've sat down with us and they said, you know, as we've come to this decision this is what God's downloading with me. And I hear it and I just go, that, man, that is phenomenal. That's amazing. You know, praise God that that's something that he wants you to be doing. And, and like Cindy's saying, over the next number of weeks, what we want to do, we want to come together 
And uh, Ryan is going to be with us next week, which would be great. He's such a prophetic voice in the body of Christ. And I believe that he knows and, and he's a part of Harvest Global with me and, uh, and, uh, and his ministry and everything. And so he, he knows exactly kind of what, what's going on in our lives and the decisions that we're making. He's been praying for us and, and he's been confirming as well prophetically. Uh, kind of the steps that we're that we're taking, and uh, but he'll be in, and I'm, I'm sure that what he's going to minister will be a will be a massive prophetic download for for all of us together, and what life is going to look like as we move forward, and um, and so you know I know that each of you we want to we want to release you to whatever decisions that you you will need to make. You know, uh, I know some people are saying, listen, you know, we want to continue to give into Harvest Global, into the ministry. We want to in some way be a part of what you're doing and um, and be a part of the maybe the future conferences and things and be a part of those things and and just the what what could be possibly. And so and some others may say, listen, you know, we uh, this may be a time that we will begin to search for another church body and we understand that and we bless, bless everybody in that you know but we want to know your dreams and so when we come together the first Sunday of March and the third Sunday of March we want to hear these are the dreams so that we can come together and we can pray and prophesy over every one of you and just release something into your life and let let this season be a be a, uh, a, a place that will catapult you into your destiny, into what God's doing in your life. Listen, yes. we're all called to make an impact. We're all called yes. to be a leader. Exactly. You know, we're not called just to sit in a church and warm a pew or warm a seat. We are called to have an effect upon this generation. Absolutely. You know, and you are called to be a leader. And you are called to walk out your destiny and to impact lives and to bring the kingdom of God wherever you go and see it influence people. And so we want to encourage you in that. And we believe that what we're going to be doing in the future will continue to yes. encourage people in that. And so we look forward to the next number of weeks as we can, we can hear your dreams and you can share that with the body of Christ and that we can all get around you and prophesy over you and, and see you releasing that. And then the last Sunday, March 28th, we're going to come together and we're going to have a party, yeah. you know, and we're going to have a blast. And I just encourage you, if you're, if you're watching this and you at one time have been a part of Harvest, maybe you moved away or whatever, we'd love for you to come back and share that with us, you know. Be with us on that on that Sunday where we celebrate what God has done over these 22 years and, and the lives that have been impacted, the lives have been changed and they're continu continuing to be changed. And now their, their life has changed. So they're changing lives as well Absolutely. through the power of God. And so, um, we appreciate, uh, we've been with you now for 48 minutes. That's way too long. And, uh, but we hope that you receive what we're saying and understand and we, we want you, you know, we want all want to stand together and we want to rejoice in the Lord Absolutely. that, that, you know, it's a new day and, and, um, you know, nothing in relationally has to end, has to, has to, to, you know, end in any way. Right. And so, um, uh, you know, we look forward to time you coming over to our house, cooking out, grilling out, having fun together, you know, and. And just in, in continuing to do that. You know, I know that some have t thought about, boy, I would love to begin a community group and, and do that and have people and just do life together. And we encourage you in that. That's, that's just yes. an awesome thing. And so, um, so baby, anything you want to say as we end? You know, I think part of it is that uh, this is not the end of a church because no. the church is within us. You know, the that's kingdom exactly. of heaven is within us. Holy Spirit said, your body is my temple, you know, and uh, so everywhere we go, we are the church. Exactly. And so we are in relationship with one another. We're family. 
and uh, you know that that is just going to continue to get stronger you know as we lay aside the Sunday meetings the you know the rest of the week we'll but just become, do life together yeah it we will we we'll, will most and, definitely and that's what church is doing Amen. life together Amen. So. yeah we so, love each and every one of you so no, very we do much. we do and uh want us to pray for you okay yes thank you jesus father we just thank you for this opportunity to share yes, god the lord. thoughts thank and the plans jesus. that you've been putting in our hearts thank father mine cindy's heart god a heart for our community church community lord god father we thank you god that you have great plans great destinies for every one of us and god we we need to be passionate in everything that we do to live out every day god father living out every day let's like it's like it's our last day but living out every day into the dreams and destinies and plans that you have for us and so i pray god for every person that's listening to this right now that will listen to it later lord god that father that you God will just illuminate, Father, the, 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 your thoughts, your plans, your dreams within their lives, and they'll begin to see it, begin to download it, Father. I pray, Father, that, Lord, that change is a good thing. Yes. And change, Lord God, is something that we have to walk through. But, Lord God, I just pray, Father, for grace over every person, grace over our lives, God, grace over over our other pastors and our leaders, Pastor Rifle, Pastor Brian, God, uh, Father, our elders and others, Father, and just grace over every person, Father, that 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 calls Harvest their home. Lord, uh, what we have dreamed about Harvest, what is the 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 core uh, values of Harvest, core beliefs, God, never ends. It will continue on, Father, in our lives. That we live it out, God. So we thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you so much for hopping on this morning, being with us. And we, uh, we love each other, every one of you. Look forward to seeing you next week as we gather together in sunshine and warm, warmer weather, okay? And, um, but uh, we're here for you. So let us know if you, uh, you, you know, you would like to get together or whatever. Okay. We love you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.